There came Brother Stanley up the driveway, carrying on his back a little child crying because of the cold. In these graphic words, J. Mann captured Thanksgiving Day, 1938. America was still in the anguish of the Great Depression, and the tiny, tattered ragamuffin in President Stanley's care was only one of 21,000 of Cincinnati's poor who had flocked to Mount Auburn in spite of the worst snowstorm and coldest wind experienced at this season in many years. On that Thanksgiving day, as well as on more than 60 others, God's Bible School had spread a lavish feast for all the down and outers, including vast numbers of children. The boy had no hat. He was wet with melting snow. His shoeless feet were almost frozen. His dirty little hands were grasping Brother Stanley's white collar, and childish tears were running down Brother Stanley's neck. Mann describes the beloved college president as he supported the little fellow with his left hand, and in his right he carried a little worn-out shoe dripping with mud and water. GBS faculty and students had worked for weeks, begging funds, arranging transportation, and plucking turkeys, all for the sheer love of him who gave up heaven for the love of us. No wonder it was that a world-famous photographer snapping pictures on campus that day was overwhelmed. I have never seen anything that gripped my soul like this Thanksgiving affair, John L. Herman noted. He had been the chief photographer with Admiral Richard E. Byrd on his second South Polar expedition. Who among the participants of those annual feasts could ever forget the buses with their hungry hordes, the sermons, prayers, and goodie bags which came with the turkey and the dressing? or the tons of potatoes, the bottled milk, or the 75-gallon wooden barrels filled with pickles. Meredith Stanley long ago was enshrouded by history's encircling mists, and God only knows what became of that little tear-spattered street urchin with the dripping worn-out shoe. But the gripping photos of those feasts for Cincinnati's poor still remind us of Christ's words, Inasmuch as ye have done it unto the least of these my brethren, ye have done it unto me. Right in the corner where you are is one of the choruses that children like to sing, and the students all gathered here in the auditorium this morning at God's Bible School, and you out there sing it with us right in the corner, right where you are. And another song that the kiddies always like to sing on Thanksgiving is Joy, Joy, Joy. And I have the joy, joy, joy.
can't get over it. So wild, you can't get around it. So low, you can't get under it. You must call me at the door. You may travel east, you may travel west, you may travel where you will. But the Lord's good fool gonna shut you out, and the devil's gonna get you. For it is so high, you can't get over it. So wide, you can't get around it. So low, you can't get under it. And you must come in at the floor. For years, the Cincinnati Street Railway Company had used its buses to bring tattered, hungry youngsters from the inner city slums to the GBS campus for its gigantic Thanksgiving Day meals. But it was 1942. America was at war, and the government had forbidden all use of buses for special purposes. This caused dismay on the hilltop, for it was unthinkable to cancel the great feast, which had been a tradition at the school since its beginning. Upon learning that Judge Robert Marks was leaving by train for Washington, D.C., Meredith Stanley drove to his home and took him to the station. En route, he told Marks what he wanted. Judge Marks was a close friend of President and Mrs. Roosevelt. He told the First Lady about the Thanksgiving Day dinner and the pressing need for the buses. The details of what transpired next are unclear, but through Roosevelt's intervention, the necessary permission was granted. In her nationally syndicated newspaper column, My Day, Mrs. Roosevelt favorably mentioned GBS's great holiday feast for underprivileged children and recounted her conversation with Judge Marks, whose face glowed as he told the story. I must say that it is good to know that in these times of stress, we do not give up these charities, which mean so much to the children and to their parents. It was September 14, 1947, and Arthur C. Palmer spoke with mounting enthusiasm as he dedicated the new Jeeps and house trailers lined up behind the chapel. The GIs of the Cross had been established as a traveling school to train students in house and highway evangelism. Everybody at GBS was welcome to join, but those boys who had just come home from World War II received major focus. As eager to trounce the devil as they had the axis, they were G.I.s still, God's issues for Jesus Christ. Their motto was, keep them rolling, and Jeeps and trailers became the most visible symbol of this revival on wheels. If you will give me a penny a day, I will evangelize every home in America through this special trained laity, Meredith Stanley boldly claimed. He distributed thousands of mite banks and began the final and most ambitious, innovative, evangelistic campaign of his GBS presidency. Initially, about 40 students were recruited and were divided into four units. Each group was bidden Godspeed, given $10, and instructed to go through the South conducting revival services and to rendezvous on a certain date at a prearranged place. 
After rolling into a town, students would spend two hours each morning in classes and then go calling from house to house in the afternoons. Evening evangelistic rallies were held either in public auditoriums, tents, or churches. This was to be the pattern for the next several years. Chief Charles Pamptipi headed the All Indian GIs of the Cross to evangelize fellow Native Americans in Minnesota, Wisconsin, South Dakota, and Nebraska. The GI's Jeep and Trailer Evangelism was not confined to the United States alone. Danilo Gonzalo, a Cuban student, was the interpreter for the campaign in his homeland. A similar venture took place in Jamaica, where services were conducted in 50 different places. In Haiti, the GI's presence was represented by alumna Helen Hammer. There was even a campaign in India under the supervision of Captain and Mrs. H.G. Platt. Jeeps and trailers probably will not be in heaven. However, there will be people there as a result of those Jeeps and trailers and the GIs who were faithful to keep them rolling.